Welcome uh, to our gathering, and my name is Anas, and I serve as the managing director of, of Project Sakina, which is an initiative that Darul Islam has put together to encourage our community to wake up to the reality of this global issue uh, that affects the very core of our families. And we'll begin our time together with recitation of Quran um, by Imam Tahir al Anwar. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والذين يقولون ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما الله make this uh, a, a source of خير and good for all of us and uh, the reason I chose these verses specifically is because of that one verse at the end of that our, our prayer to God Almighty that may God make our spouses a, a coolness of our eyes and our children and that's uh, precisely what uh, the organizers have uh, um, intended uh, by bringing us all together uh, we pray that um, our families and our communities become uh, peaceful families and peaceful communities um, I myself uh, have been an advocate for DV for a number of years and um, uh, it's, it, there's very few Imams who even want to speak about this and there's many that are honestly in denial as I was mentioning a few moments ago so we begin our day with, with uh, prayers, we begin our day with sincerity and we begin our day with love and we begin our day with uh, asking God to uh, grant us success, Amin. This day is not a day that's intended to send you all home uh, with to-do lists of things that uh, you have to get done and uh, there's going to be a follow-up meeting or, or something like that that's going to make you do something. Nor is it a day uh, that's been structured so that you're, you just sit back and uh, people tell you all this amazing stuff and you, kind of can, you can kind of consume the, uh, uh, the experience of the day. It's, 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 the intention is for uh, our gathering to fall somewhere in between those two. And we're hoping that by the end of the day, uh, we're so excited by the gifts uh, that have been, all the presents that have been shared, that, that we're willing to stand up and um, be able to declare what it is that we think that we can, what it is that we think we want to do in terms of keeping the conversation going and uh, keep, keeping the movement going forward on it. What I want to do is to encourage us to think about this issue and many other issues in terms of the possibilities for our community and the gifts that we have. What I want to say to you is that domestic violence is a reality in our Muslim community, but it presents us with an opportunity individually and collectively right here today. It presents us each with the opportunity to acknowledge the reality and to respond in it, to it in a way that is pleasing to our Lord. It is possible for us to have a community that acknowledges its challenges and sees those challenges as strengths. And it is possible for, it is possible for us to have a community that it sees the value in speaking up about oppression that's going on within our community just as much as it sees the value of talking about oppression of the community by some uh, external force. When it comes to actually recognizing the problem itself, which is abuse, we have to, as a community, be able to have resources to be able to put, right, those, those who have been seriously abused and hurt and transgressed and violence in the way that we're using the word has occurred upon them to be able to go. I think that the most uh, promising strategies for doing something about domestic and sexual violence actually come from all of us, um, uh, not only people that are, uh, in, you know, during uh, the week 
from nine to five working on the issue of domestic violence, but those of us that are living in our own communities with our family, friends, and neighbors, and um, in the different communities that we're part of, that it's really in that setting, in those contexts, where we can find um, the most appropriate solutions uh, to these issues. I'll also tell you that there are four, at least four generations of domestic violence in my own family. So I have a really personal uh, connection to this issue and have a lot of um, sort of good and bad experiences seeing how family, friends, and neighbors can both be really supportive when violence is happening in a good way for change and also do nothing or really collude when the violence is happening. And so thinking about the power of what we can do as family and friends and as a community uh, is something that led me to think about close to home, starting close to home. And these were some of the initial questions, like how can we get more people talking about this and make this more of a community issue, which I know is like a, a question that's driving uh, us all being together today. And then how can we find more proactive solutions? So we're not just reacting to the violence after it happens, but doing something more proactively. And then who is currently involved now and how can we get more people involved in doing something about it? The World Health Organization did a study and found that 60 to 90% of women that experience violence actually never turn to a formal agency. For and so there are many reasons that family, friends, and neighbors, I think, can play such a powerful role. First of all, family, friends, and neighbors are often the first to know. Even if the disclosure doesn't go directly to them, they may suspect or have concerns about that. And I think that if, if anyone in the room has had a family or friend, um, family member or friend that's experienced violence, we know how much it can affect us too. And so I think that we're all really important stakeholders. In addition for it being important for family and friends, I think that if we can broaden it to the broader community, um, that we can really move the conversation from being just an issue about individuals or families with problems to an issue of violence that is something we all have a role and responsibility to do something about. So it flips it from, from the unit of change, from a more micro level to a macro level. And from there, I think we can really start to think about preventing the violence before it happens and creating some real transformation versus, again, just responding to it. And so I think that the vision that we have for this from Close to Home's perspective is that all of these layers of support in community will actually be activated to do something about domestic and sexual violence. So really the whole community is taking it on and doing something about it. What are some of the barriers and risks to getting involved in this? And these are just a few of the things that folks came up with. One was fear, like fear of physical retaliation, fear of losing relationships. In the community where I work um, and live, there's a large immigrant and refugee community from Vietnam. And so this, this question of outing the community um, and to be seen in some negative light was also an issue there. I think also paralysis on not knowing what to say or what to do. So real overwhelm around how do we, what's my role? How long is it gonna take for me to sort of involve myself in this situation? Not knowing when, this issue actually became a public issue that they had a role in doing something about because it's framed as a private family issue. How do we then do something about this? We can all play a role and there are different levels of involvement that we can all do on a, on a daily basis. But we divided the types of actions people could take into personal actions, neighborhood actions, and community actions. If I wanted to start an organization in my community, like cities around me, how do I go about doing that? You start close to home. You start with your people, the pe your people, your circle, and even you know just your friends or just your family, or just uh, you know I mean, there's Yusuf. Yusuf goes out and has a, he goes out and has coffee with the brothers, right? So somebody that does that that wants to that you know he could start there or whatever it is that you do that's kind of social is a place potentially where you can start to have this conversation. The main thing is to break, this, to break that silence and to break that isolation by coming together. You know, there's a number of great programs, um, but I think what Amy's um, presentation and, and kind of what Project Sakina is really trying to foster is, you know, the community um, response and, um, and seeing that 
there's a lot of different uh, people kind of scattered throughout who are invested in this issue, who have spent time and, and energy and resources, and how do we bring those folks together? Like what is the community response that is really uh, in a way separate to the service response? Um, it can be, I mean, it, it ought to be in collaboration. Um, but what is our community response? Uh, what does it look like? We need to invite people so that they learn about it, so that it happens before it hits home, that people become aware of that. I think we have come a long way over, the, if I tell you what it took for 10 minutes on a platform, to now we spend a whole, a whole day. So it's really amazing to see common people coming and talk about that. Because usually it's not uh, our attitude, the shame was mentioned, shame and guilt. What goes in my bedroom is none of your business. We have to change that. It is my business if it affects the community, if it's affecting the children. The Quran calls upon us to take a position. We can't be bystanders that sit on the fence. We can't. We got to get roll our sleeve and get into the mud. Because that's a responsibility that God places on us when God says you are the best community. Why you are the best community? Because your name is Muhammad, because you have a beard, because you cover, you wear hijab, because you eat biryani and drink hot tea. No. You see, you are the best community because you will encourage what is good, you will encourage people to do what is good, and you will condemn what they do wrong. That's what, on that criteria, we are the best community. And, and, and we have to let people know. So awareness, learning, organizing, talking to people, very, very important. The sister of a friend of my daughter-in-law uh, had been treated by her husband in such a way that she was in great distress. And she went to a drugstore and actually collapsed. And the distress was caused by verbal abuse, although she was physically abused before. The verbal abuse was that she cooked the breakfast for the husband, and then one of the children started crying. So she goes to take care of the child, and in the meantime, he demands the remote control. And she didn't get there in time, and the, the, the verbal abuse started, and it won't end. So I gave that example. In the middle of the khutbah just popped up in my head. Uh, after the khutbah, an older man came and said, pointed to his, himself with a finger on his chest. He says, I do that, and I'm ashamed of it. I'm going to stop doing it. So there is, there is some progress. Uh, Dar al-Islam got into this thing out, uh, because of a, a tragedy that occurred. Um, so alhamdulillah, we are, well, we are in it. We, we want to be of uh, help. Our idea was that there are actually a lot of people who are doing work on the issue already, um, but the community, the, the larger Muslim community, in many cases doesn't know about the work that's going on and doesn't know how to interface with that, how to, how to help. What we wanted to do was to try to kind of figure out a way to build bridges so that there were lots of different ways that people could, could be involved from very kind of casual things they could do to support the work uh, to a little bit more involvement, a little bit more involvement, all the way up to somebody who was a, a full-time advocate of, of one stripe or another. And along with that, we just felt like there needed to be a lot more general community support. The issue is not having what should we do. That is not really the issue. There's like hundreds of things to do uh, that, that people can do. The issue is what am I going to do and when am I going to do it? So it's really uh, what we've been trying to address all day is this first step of how do I step forward kind of into the stream of working on this and other issues. We would like to see lots and lots of grassroots efforts and small small even small kitchen that that kitchen table organizing doing things it's all good right just do something step out in some way